In the past two years, I've made $1.6 million from LinkedIn, and in this video, I'm gonna show you exactly how to do it. For those of you that are new to the content, all I talk about is industrial marketing, industrial sales, but who am I? I've been in the industry for 23 years, engineering, sales, marketing, own an agency for the last eight. The way the show works is I'm gonna go through the topic, go through the content. You guys need to leave some comments in the comment section, ask questions, give feedback, etc. What is this over here, Kyle? I know what you're wondering, what's with this set deck? We got some, I don't even wanna touch it because this thing's gonna fall, it's so pretty. We got some coffee here, shop floor coffee, built by manufacturers for manufacturers. If you guys drink coffee, you need to get yourself some shop floor coffee. You're gonna be seeing a lot of this. It's a newer brand, only for industrial companies. The names of these vi of these uh, different flavors is ridiculously funny, very fitting for the shop floor people. You can see a lot of content about this on our channel because we are the marketing partner with it. We're pushing it out hard. So if you guys are interested in coffee, put a comment in the comment section below saying that you want to test it out Maybe, maybe we'll do a raffle a raffle or a giveaway. Maybe we'll get, send out some free coffee bags. We got ground coffee and fresh bean coffee that you got to grind up yourself. That's too bougie for me. I'm more of like a, dude, I'll do that instant coffee, but I'm going to try this stuff out. And so far, we did one pot this morning, and this thing was fire. So if you guys are coffee connoisseurs, check this out. Put a comment section in the comment. Put a comment in the comment section below saying, I want to try that stuff and we'll put you on a list. So what are we talking about today? We're talking about leveraging leveraging LinkedIn for industrial marketing. This is a topic that we talk about oh so much, LinkedIn. I have so much content about LinkedIn and we have not talked about it live in a while, so I figured, hey, let's just give away all the secrets, the tips, the tricks, and some things that I never talk about are gonna be discussed today, so you better tune into it. All right, so number one we're gonna talk about switch over. We're doing purple today. All right, let's go. Let's go purple. Number one, the why. So how many of you people on the live right now or in the replay are currently using LinkedIn as your marketing strategy? And you feel like, dude, I'm hook, line and sinker. I am going after this stuff. Put it in a comment section below. If, you, if you're part of that, put a one, put a one in the comments and say, yeah, I'm going in. If you're not, put a zero, and I'm gonna dive deep into why. Here's, here's the why behind this. Every, and this is where it's, it's missed so frequently by people. Every single person, as long as you're not going after like small mom and pop shops, very small businesses, every single person you're trying to go after is on LinkedIn. And you can find them by searching their company. And for the most part, you go to their company's people, and then you can find who it is that you need to talk to. It's so simple. It is the database that is updated regularly. Just think about this. When people get a new job, they update their LinkedIn. A lot of people find jobs from LinkedIn, but their LinkedIn profile is their like resume to the world, sales and marketing wise, salespeople out there that are trying to use LinkedIn to leverage, which we'll get into how to use it for sales. You're trying to use it. You reach out to somebody and they're like, I don't know you, I don't know you from anybody, but they can look at your LinkedIn profile. They know where you went to school, how long you've been in a job for, how many successes you've had. All of that stuff they know by your LinkedIn profile. So what is the importance of that? Well, I think you all agree with me that number one rule of sales is you have to build trust in order to close a deal. If you don't establish trust, you cannot close any deal. They have to trust in you and they have to trust in the product or the service that you're offering. What a better way to do that and have a 24 seven trust building thing out there, which is your LinkedIn profile. So not only can you go on the offense, find the people, find the demographic, find the companies you're trying to go after. But then as you're engaging with them, they look at you and they're like, yeah, I trust this guy. He's saying these things. He's doing these things. He's been in the industry for a long time. I'm going to trust this guy. Trust this girl. That is the beauty of it on LinkedIn is that it's just out there 24 seven. So, Going into the why even deeper, the why behind why people are not using it. Let's talk about that. People typically just use it as a directory. That is a traditional way. They're just like, hey, I'm going to search, find the person, then pick up the phone and call them. That's not the way to do it. You've got to stay within this platform. First step, and I talk like, so this is, I'm going to show you today exactly what has taken me from five, 600 followers to over 22,000. I'm gonna show you how we built out company pages, how we get a 12X impressions to followers ratio on company pages, 
clients that we manage. I'm going to show you how I made $1.6 million off of LinkedIn in the last two, two and a half years, strictly from this strategy that I'm going to lay out. I'm going to show you how our clients pay attention. Some of our clients, the salespeople, pay attention closer to their LinkedIn messaging inbox than their email or their phone because this stuff just works. Depends on your industry, depends on who you're going after. It may not work the exact same level, but I promise you, any minute that you spend on LinkedIn will be at least a 10X multiplier in revenue for you. Number two is update your profile. And update, update, slash company page. Update your profile on your company page, all you out there. And, and here's why. Here's why. Most of you guys out there, you've got like job experience and the school you went to and all that stuff. That's cool. But before we send a ton of people to view your stuff, you have to give it a quick update. And no, I'm not a resume builder. And you can find people on LinkedIn that are like, I'm going to create the best LinkedIn profile for you to get a job. Cool. I'm going to teach you how to make the best profile to make money. That's what it all comes down to. Get attention, make money. That simple. The number one area, you have to look at your headline. Your headline is right underneath your name. By default, LinkedIn puts your current job position at your current company. That's cool. But if people don't know who you are, what you do, or who you work for, what do they care? If you're like, I'm the sales manager at abcpipingsupply.com, that means nothing to them. If anything, that's going to hurt you because they're going to see sales up. Oh, this dude wants to sell me something. This girl wants to sell me something. This person wants to market something to me. I'm not going to connect with them. Step one, update that profile. Your headline should be relevant to what it is that you do. Problems that you solve, something that's relevant. Put some vertical bars, some dashes, however you want to lay it out. Look at my profile. Look at other people's profiles in the space that have a lot of followers. See how creative they get with their headline. That is step one. Here's why. People send you a connection request. And all they see is your picture, your name, and your headline, and that's it. So as it's coming through, just think about in your own, from your own POV, when you click my network at the top of LinkedIn and you see all these people sending you connection requests, you're going you're gonna to base a lot of people. So I get a lot of connection requests every single day. So I base it just off the name, the picture, and what they do. And I usually say, no, 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 no. Ooh, this person I want to click. So you need to make it relevant to who you're going after. If you're selling... Uh, let's go with the piping thing. You're, you're a piping supply salesperson that sells stock pipes for whatever application. You want to say helping industrial companies with their, with their pipe problems or with their needs for their PVC piping, like helping industrial companies, not selling to them, helping. Make it more about them and less about you. So that's step one, update the headline. Step two with your profile and it's just everything else, you need to update your about us. You need to put a background image behind you. It does not have to be something specific to the company you're working for. It could be anything that's relevant to you. If you like snowboarding, put a mountain with you snowboarding. If you like fishing, put a river that you fish at. The background, the, up, the image that's above your head in your profile. Update that. Everything needs to be updated. Your about you, your job what you've done at your job, featured links. Just go to my profile after this, after you're watching this, go to my profile and just look out how I have it built up. Things I'm interested in, the about me section with some things that we've done, the featured link section with some specific videos that I have on there, my job title, my position, my accomplishments, my history, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera, skills and features and all these things. It's completely built out. So build it out. Look at mine. Look at other people that you admire. Look at other people in your space that you feel like are producing a lot of content and getting a lot of engagement, getting a lot of followers. Look at how they built out theirs. It's not just marketing person at this company with nothing underneath it. You need to blow that up. You, you need to use your profile as a marketing tool, as a sales tool. So blow that up by writing stuff in there. What have you done? What does your company do? What are you guys best at? It's a value proposition statement. People are looking at your stuff. You want to drive them to the website, make some money. The other thing you want to do is you want to make sure that your and people, some people are like, no, I don't want to do that. That's fine. You don't have to do this part. I think it's the best part is make your stuff public. So you can edit your public profile and I turn everything on. You can see my name, my headline, my company, my photo, everything publicly. Indexable on search engines, et cetera. If you're really in this, if you're really trying to make moves and trying to use this as a tool, make it all public. And also 
edit your URL. People usually don't do that. I'm like, why don't you edit your URL? By default, LinkedIn will say Joe-Smith-1234 through 10 with characters to it. Edit your public profile to just say first name dash last name or first name and last name together or first or first initial and last name, something that's relevant to you. You can change that by editing your public profile URL. So that's getting into update. Does everybody agree? Like update your profile. It's just like building a company. You can't sell or push a service until your website's up there because you're going to get all this attention around something that's broken. Fix that profile and your stuff won't be broken. Number three, now we're getting into the details because everybody's like, oh, I already know that. Update my profile. Grow your network. This is where the rubber meets the road. How are we going to do this, Kyle? How are we going to grow our network? We're going to grow our network, network a couple different ways. Number one, get sales navigator. It's like 79 bucks, 99 bucks a month. It is well worth it. Now, back in the day, and I said back in the day, like six, seven years ago, you used to be able to do some things on LinkedIn by default, the normal LinkedIn with filtered searches. They moved a lot of the good stuff away and pushed it into Sales Navigator because they want you to spend money, right? LinkedIn's free, upsell you, spend money to get Sales Navigator. Here's the power behind it. List building, saving companies, saving leads, and doing strategic filtered searches. I mean, I'm talking, you go in and you say, I want to see companies at these industries in this geographic region with this many employees that have this type of technology or these keywords in their company profile. And then you do that from an account standpoint. This is the key. Start with accounts. Don't start with people. I'm going to tell you why. Start with accounts. So you get Sales Navigator, sign up. It's going to ask you all these stupid questions, right? Save some companies, save some leads. We want to try and work the algorithm around. Okay. Usually the companies that they offer up are not relevant for, to us or any of our clients. So get through that spot, go into the accounts, do a filtered search. Start building lists. So I'm going to do a filter search for people in mining and metals, chemicals, plastic packaging and containers. I'm going to create this search. 51 to 200 people, 500 to 1,000 employees, 10,000 plus employees. Depends on who you're going after. Do this search and hit save. You want to save the search because you can go back and create multiple save searches. As you go through this search, you need to save the company specifically that you want to go after. This is not a shotgun. This is not a spray and pray. This is not a just go after everybody. You want to save specific companies. This should take you not much time. As you're scrolling through it, on the right-hand side, you're going to be like company name, description that they have. Maybe you have to hit the see more. Save or not save. Save them to a list. So you hit save. Do you want to save them to a list or just save them to the regular list? No, I want to save them to a specific list. These are machinery companies. These are plastics companies. This is what marketing and salespeople should be doing every single day is working through Sales Navigator. So you build out this list. You go and save these accounts as leads. These are people you want to go after. Save them to that list. Go through. You get 50. You get 100. You get 200. Like, Don't be like, oh, Kyle, I don't have the time to do it. This is going to work. This is going to transform your hunting, prospecting, network building, revenue, income for yourself if you invest the time in doing this. I promise you that. We do this every day here. We do this for all of our clients too that are signed up on that program. It works. I teach our clients every single week. I'll have 12 salespeople at a company <clears throat> and they're all making good money. And I'll be like, you guys need to be doing this with LinkedIn. They start doing it six months later, like, oh, game changer. So you build your lead list for accounts. And here's why you don't go after people first. Here's a little trick. When somebody works at a company, by default, their profile is gonna say they work in this industry because it's attached to this company. But as they leave that company, if they don't update their industry that their person profiles is in, then it is not going to update on their profile. So somebody can go from chemicals to textiles to plastic packaging containers. You're like, I'm going after chemical companies. And I'm going after people, people in the industry of chemical companies. And this person, they, they haven't been in that industry for six years, but they never updated the industry to match their company. So you're going after them like, dude, I have nothing to do with chemicals anymore. I'm in plastic packaging and containers. I'm in transportation and logistics. I'm in makeup, skincare now. I left that industrial world behind. 
I'm not the commodity manager, director of engineering, operations manager. That's not me. Not for that industry. I'm doing this other thing over here. So you got to start with the accounts, save all these accounts. Then from there, you're going to find people at these accounts. So then when you go into the lead list on Sales Navigator, then you go and you say, show me people, but you toggle a little button at the top. I know you guys are probably like, can you just do this as a tutorial or like a walkthrough or something like that? If you guys want me to walk you through this live with my screen shared, then put, I want to see it live or something like that in the comment section. And we'll create a little webinar group, a little private group of people, public to no one, private group of you guys. And I'll do a live webinar to walk you through this exactly. But back to the training, go into the leads, toggle the button that says only show from saved accounts from this specific list. Cool. So now I'm looking for people at that. Now I go through the people job function, job function, title, seniority, all of that stuff. But you can go after what school they went to. If you want to try and be like, Hey, we both went to the same school, man. Let's do business together. You could try and do that. I never done that before. Probably because I also didn't go to school. So maybe that's why maybe if I did go to college, like most people did, then I'd be like, Hey, Baylor, right? Isn't that where you went? Yeah. Riley went to Baylor. I'd be like, hey, man, we went to Baylor together. Like Mason went to A&M. Like, let's go Aggies. Aggies? Let's go Aggies. Uh, so I didn't do that, so I don't play with that. But you can. And so once you get these filtered searches and these filtered things, and you want to save that list. So now you've got a saved account list. Now you've got a saved lead list based on those accounts. That's going to come back with people. There's a secret button that you want to toggle in the filters. Now, if you're looking at the filters on the left-hand side and you're like, there aren't a ton of filters, there's somewhere, depending on how your layout is, there's somewhere you, where you can say, click all filters. I'm going to show, show me all the filters. Within those filters, there's a secret one that they don't, I don't know why they don't just put this at the top. It's way at the bottom where it says posted on LinkedIn in the past 30 days. Maybe it's just post on LinkedIn now. It used to be 30 days, 60 days, 90 days. Post on LinkedIn. Why is that important, Kyle? Why is it important for me to connect with people that I'm trying to provide value to, market to, get them to use our product or service because I believe that they will get some benefit from it. I believe it will make their day, their life, their job easier. Why is it important for me to say post on LinkedIn in 30 days? Most of you are thinking, duh, because it shows that they're active. So if I send you a connection request and you haven't been on LinkedIn in two years, it's just going to be hanging out there. And I do that a hundred times, a thousand times, 10,000 times. Out of those 10,000 times that people are just like, they're not on LinkedIn. LinkedIn's going to look at your stuff and be like, I don't want to push this person anymore to these connection requests. I'm going to say like, dude, you're being too spammy with this because nobody's accepting your connection requests. So lowest hanging fruit posted on LinkedIn. If you didn't write that down, write that down right now. Posted on LinkedIn. Your list is going to go from 5,000, 50,000 people at these companies, these accounts that you saved. It's going to go from that down to like 30% of it, 20% of it. These are the people you want to go after first. Because if they're posting on LinkedIn, I know what you may be thinking like, oh, but they're a maintenance person. They're an ops person. They're going to post on LinkedIn. They actually do. They share the company page stuff. So just you're just trying to look for the lowest hanging fruit. Who's active on LinkedIn? Posted on LinkedIn in the past 30 days. Now it goes into the fun part, which is sending connection requests. There's two ways to do this. The traditional way is going to be go through the right-hand side, click connect, add your custom note, which is like you can do it. You can do it one at a time and say, hey, Joe, uh, I do this, this, and that. Thought you'd get some value out of it. Hey, would love to connect with people that you know. Don't use the stuff that like when you Google search it, it's like AI generator. Like you need to say company name and I love what you're doing and these improvements that you had. None of that stuff works. It sounds cheesy. It comes off as cheesy. It's like, hey, we work in the same space of machinery. We work in oil and gas. And I thought I'd love to connect with you. Super simple, direct to the point. Go through, connect, send a message, paste it. Connect, 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 right? That's the traditional way of doing it. Here's bonus tip number one, super secret. You can automate this. I have automated this for years. Now, I send out one-off connection requests. When I come across somebody, I'm like, I want to connect with that person. Send it off, write a note, etc. I do that. I don't know, 20, 30 times a month. But the bulk of it is through automation tools. If you guys want to know the specific tool that will not break your bank, I'm not talking about a $500 a month solution. I'm talking about super minimal. If you guys want to know this tool, put a comment in the comment section and say, I want to automate. 
and we will send you guys the tool. There is no affiliate. There is none of that stuff. It's just this is what works for us right now. This specific tool. And it's so cost effective. But I don't want to go through it because I'll end up getting banned. So we can't do it on this live. But if you want it, let us know. I'll have one of my sales guys in the comment section send you a DM after the show and get that over to you, that link. And then we're going to create some tutorial videos for it as well. Because we're just trying to help you guys out, right? This is a tool that you can use to blow up your revenue in your pipeline if it's done properly. So let's recap real quick. Number one, update your profile. Headline is most important. Number two, grow your network. You've got to put time into this. Get Sales Navigator. It's worth the 99 bucks. Build account lists based on your demographic, multiple account lists, right? Save those searches for those accounts. Once you got them in the save searches, now you're going to save them as leads, account leads into lists. It just pops up. You click save. Which list do you want to put this to? A little pop-up to this list. Save them to those. Once you get the account saved, then you go into the leads and say, I want to only show me people, because they could just call people leads, only show me people that are in this list. Put their criteria in there, job function, seniority level, whatever, right? All that stuff. Put that in there. Save that. But don't forget to toggle that button that says active on LinkedIn or post on LinkedIn in the last 30 days. Now you got a list. Then you're going to send the connection request to the people. You can do it this way, one off if you don't want to spend a little bit of money, less than 100 bucks a month to automate it. But here's a cool thing. Even with the tool you're going to need to have Sales Navigator to do this effectively. So you need to have it. So just go down the path of doing it. And then if you want to know, put a comment in the comment section below. I want to automate. We'll get you hooked up. That's the building the network part. How fast can this happen? So you can send out 100 LinkedIn connection requests a week. All the third-party tools know that, understand that. You don't want to get spat, uh, flagged as spam or anything like that. So you can send out 100 a week. That's the cap. It used to be unlimited. I remember back in when I moved to Texas from Chicago, 2018, I think it was, 17, 18? I think it was 2017. I forget. 2018, six years ago. I would do a search on my phone because at that time, mobile had the best, quickest way to send connection requests was on mobile. So I'd do a search on my phone with the filters, with the criteria, and then I'd hand the phone to one of my kids and they would scroll through. And I'd say, all I want you to do is scroll and hit connect, 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 go through the list. And they would do that. They would, I would send out 1,200 connection requests in like 35 minutes. And then people accept it. About 30%, 30, 35% of people are going to accept it within the first day, first two days. The rest of the people, they're not interested. They don't, they're not on LinkedIn. They don't check their uh, requests, et cetera. Then I have to go through and uninvite them a couple weeks later because I don't want it to look like I've got all these pending invites. It used to be 5,000. You used to be able to have 5,000 pending connection requests at any point in time. Oop, reach my ceiling, go in there to the sent connection request, undo, withdraw 1,000 of them one by one, no automated way. This is how I built my network. And then tools came along, made it a lot easier. So that is what you need to do. I want you to invest... Like, Kyle, how much time is this going to take me? I would say like 30 to 60 minutes a day you should be spending in Sales Navigator, in LinkedIn, figuring out who you're going after, sending connection requests. Now, if you use a third-party tool, then you could spend less time doing that. You can spend more time up from building these lists and let the tool take over and then go in and check on it. But 30 to 60 minutes a day, so five hours a week. I do it on the weekends too. Build your network. Next thing, number four. Number four, engagement. This is not a one-sided conversation as much as you guys would love to just click on something and have them sell to you. This is not a one-sided engagement. What I mean by that is do not, do not, do not. Build your network, send them a message right away and say, hey, want to buy something? Does not work ever. Sometimes... You just send them a connection request. They're like, oh, shoot, this guy's relevant. This girl's relevant. They do something that I'm interested in. Timing is there. The stars align. And they're like, hey, actually, I was looking for something that you guys do. Are you open to a call? They come to you. That can happen. But the times of you being like, I'm just in sales mode, man. I'm just a salesman. I'm going to sell it. It doesn't work at all, ever. Once in a blue moon, don't hang your hat on that. 
what this needs to be about is you're trying to build a network and a community of people that you could provide value to. So think about if your North Star is, I want to impact and influence people in this industry, in this space, right? So for me, I'm trying to provide as much value as possible to the industrial manufacturing sales and marketing world that I possibly can. A smart man once said, I think it was Alex Ramosi, said, give away for free what others make you pay for. So if my free content is better than paid content, I know I'm on the right path. So we just give it all away for free. Because most of the time, most people don't, don't, don't have the team, don't have the patience, don't have the time to take care of things. So when they come to us and have us do it, we give away everything for free. Nobody gives away as much content as we do. So I'm trying to build a network here. I'm trying to help as many people as I can in a niche that I know the most about. So you have to go into it thinking that if you, if you sell tires, if you sell machining services, you're like, I want to help engineers design their parts to be more efficient for manufacturability. Maybe that's something that you want to do. I want to make parts that are repeatable, that have the highest level of tolerance, et cetera, that go on SpaceX, go on satellites, go into aerospace parts, whatever it is, right? Whatever your mission is that you're trying to do, whether you're a business owner or a salesperson, you believe in the mission. And so with that, you want to, you want to go and say, how am I going to impact people? What am I going to do to be able to get them to have some value? So if, if you're like, I'm going after engineers, what do they need? What do those engineers need? What do the ops people need? What's two things that you can do for them today that can help them out? Give them a tip. Relate to your product, your service. Hey, here's something that just happened in the shop today. You guys that are designing parts out there, make sure you do it like this. Hey, look at this. We're trying to machine this part. Hey, look at this. We're trying to mold this plastic. And just so you guys know, go from a 60-second cycle time down to 35 seconds, you need to do more structural integrity behind the part to remove the plastic weight and it can save money and blah, blah, blah. Like there's so many different possibilities. I could give out 20 right now and pretend I worked at 10 different companies. It's all about providing as much value as possible. So you're building this network, people that you want to go after to help. Then you can market to them, your services to really help them, right? You believe in your product, you believe in your service, but you have to engage with them. It cannot be send a connection request, sell. Send a connection request, hey, do you want to buy? Do you want to sign up for my newsletter? I've got this new thing I'm doing and just use it like that. Send a connection request, let them accept it. See what they post and engage on it. Like, comment. Here's the crazy thing. Most industrial people do not get a ton of engagement on their posts. So if you're going after purchasing ops engineering, if, if they post something natively, usually the comments on it are very minimal. I'm talking like less than 10, sometimes zero. You're the first person to comment. They're going to be like, who is that? Oh, yeah, that's right. I just connected with that person. That's the type of mindset that you have to have. I want to be the first person to comment. I want to like their post. There's people that watch these lives and engage in our content every single week. I don't know most of these people personally. I haven't met them, most of them. But if you don't think that if that person needed something that I can provide to them, that I wouldn't give it 100%, whatever it is, I 100% would. Because they're in, I'm providing value to them. They're providing value back to me. It's a two-way street, right? I go live. I share some content. They like it. They comment. They do something on my posts, et cetera. That's building that community, friendship. That's what it's all about. So you have to... Provide something of value, engage with their posts. Every single day, I would say 30 minutes a day. This is something that you should not look to a third-party tool to just be like, go ahead and <clears throat> I'm going to create a chat GPT that does this, this, and that. I'm going to do some automation thing that's going to like the last 20 posts I've seen. Don't do that. Make it more personal. But go through your feed 30 minutes a day and engage. I want you to engage with things that are relevant. Put a comment in there. Like it. Maybe you say, set it on your calendar. I want to do this 30 minutes in the morning. I'm going to do my prospecting and my hunting around lunchtime, an hour during then. I'm going to do 30 minutes in the afternoon. I'm going to engage on people's posts. Put it on your calendar. Block that time off. You have to engage with your network. Engagement's where it's at, right? Don't make this one side. All right, number five. It's blank on my computer, but I just thought about it. What's it going to be? Laura knows my content so well. So we talked about why profile update, grow your network, engage. And then Laura's got Laura's got goose eggs. Now let's sell. Right? 
That's what it's all about. Market, sell, make some money. How do I turn this Kyle out? So you just want me to engage with people and then you're just going to come to me? No, you need to, once the relationship's right, this is when you go into a sales mode. So you've connected with people, you've engaged with their stuff, you comment on their stuff. When the timing is right, Kyle, when's the timing right? Oh, probably like a month, six weeks, two months, depending on how much you're engaging with them. Say, just say like this. Hey, Joe, if you ever need something for your pipe distribution, your pipe manufacturing, if you ever have some machine components that you need done, let me know. That's it. Short, simple, to the point. If you ever have a need for X, Y, and Z, let me know. Here's a link to my calendar. Would love to help you out. You don't send a brochure. You don't send a link to your website, a product thing. You don't do all of that stuff. You keep it short and to the point because you're trying to help them. You're trying to solve a problem. You have to go into it saying, I'm trying to solve a problem with this. And in order for me to do that, I need to provide value first, ask questions second, and then offer up a solution. But the sales on LinkedIn is less of like a direct, like I'm going to do an, a message, an automated message system, right? So those of you, like I said, third-party automation, how about sending direct messages to people strategically that are off of a list that you create within your networks, first-degree connections, and you send them all thank you. Thanks for being a value connection. If you ever need something, let me know. That can be automated. So if you guys want that, say, I want to automate, put it in the comment section below and we'll get in touch with you for free. But the selling is less direct selling and it's more of like a, it's more of like a, hey, if you need something, let me know. Like I'm in the room, but I'm not approaching you trying to sell to you. It's like the soft sales. It's like selling without selling. There's also some people would be like, if you give enough value, right? So any, any of you that are read books, marketing, personal development, sales books, stuff like that. Jab, 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 right hook by Gary Vaynerchuk. Give, 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 then ask. A lot of times you don't even have to ask. You just give enough and people are like, ooh, I want to provide something back. Hey, can I use you for this? Can you help me out with that? So you're trying, you're trying to give as much value as possible. When it does come time for that ask, and that book was written back in like, I don't know, 2009, 2010, still applicable today. Give value first before you ask for anything in return. When it does come time for that ask, keep it simple, direct, to the point. Do not continuously do it over and over and over again for months and months and months and months. So if I would build out a campaign if I was managing your profile. After I get the connection request, I would send a message thanking them for accepting my connection request. Then a week or two later, I would send them something of value. Maybe a day later if you have it. A guide, a book, a white paper, a case study. Not a case study that's touting why your product is better than your other competitors. Something you solved the problem for a customer, like a good case study. You got a link to a video you guys did. There's some tool that you have, a calculator, whatever. Send that to them. See if you get any feedback response from it. Then in the meantime, engage with people's posts as they come through. And then three, four, five weeks later, be like, hey, thanks for being a connection. If you ever need anything about this, let me know. Maybe you follow up a couple of times over like a year. But in between those times of you following up to sell, you are producing content, pushing it to them. Hey, Joe, here's a video we just did highlighting a new facility that we got with these XYZ capabilities. Great. Send it over to them. Now, maybe your company has a marketing partner like MFG Tribe. And we do all that stuff for you. We do the company page posts. We create the videos. We write the articles because I have degreed engineers on staff here in Austin. And we do all that for you to where the salespeople, it's so easy. They're just like grabbing something out of the library. Oh, look at this cool video they just did. Let me grab that and send it to these people. It makes it so easy for the salespeople. When you have an agency that's focused on industrial manufacturing, and this is all that we do, helping out the marketing department you just produce all the content let your team distribute it after we teach them how to do it let your team take over so in between each of those times that you're asking right so imagine your calendar let's say quarterly you want to go in for an ask then in between that you need to at least send one or two pieces of valuable content and not like a press release we just did this we're going to be at this show but like think about the power of this is like you're going to be at a show. You're not asking for them to do anything. Hey, Joe, if you're going to be at Fabtech 2024 Orlando, 
let me know, man. We'd love to have you come by. Like you use it straight through the DMs. You don't just take the people's information, say this is who the contact is, go into Zoom Info, Seamless AI, something like that, pull their contact information, then just go straight email marketing. Keep it in the platform. The stuff that could happen in the DMs of LinkedIn, sometimes stuff you don't want to know about. Sometimes I've seen stuff and I'm like, dude, this is crazy. But you can work some deals, set up conversations, set up meetings. I had, I've had, i had some very high profile people in industrial, like very high profile, message me on LinkedIn asking for meetings or saying, hey, let's talk about something, collaboration. And I'm like, how does this even happen? He could email me. You can find my email. No, straight through the DMs, more personable. This is what it's all about. You're trying to build your network with relevant people you're going after. Then all the stuff that they post, their company page posts, whatever, is in your feed. You're liking and engaging on their post, plus their company page post, plus you're commenting on it, plus you're going into their company page that's posting something and being like, oh my God, love this new thing that you guys are doing. You should check out this product that we have, like a shameless plug. Do it on the company page. Do it. Go to that post, comment it. Usually not a lot of comments on company pages. Comment it, link it back to your website. Hey, have you guys ever thought about this lubrication point for your chains and hoists? We would love to show you this. Link back to your product. It's getting crafty like that, but keeping it in LinkedIn. So all that's working, that you start mess direct messaging people, right? You're providing them with value. You're congratulating them stuff. You're endorsing them for their skills. All that, those things are happening. Then you're going to say, hey, if you ever need anything, man, let me know. If you need, ever need something with these products or services, not sure if you're aware but we do X, Y, I do, I'm in charge of X, Y, Z at this company. If you need something, let me know. And just sit back and watch it work. Watch them engage back. Thanks for letting me know. Shoot them a video. That was cool. Thanks. Like if I scroll through my DMs, the conversations that have happened just out of thin air are ridiculous. I post a video. Somebody's like, hey, I came across your YouTube channel and these things have helped change my life and X, Y, and Z. I'm now going after this. I've had people comment, oh, I, I didn't want to go into sales. Now I do because you're talking about industrial sales. Or, I'm in marketing. I want to get into industrial marketing because I love it so much. Some lady last week talked about that on live. So it's like I'm trying to provide as much value as possible. And if I go to a specific industry, a niche, a president, marketing manager, salesperson, say, hey, you ever need anything with industrial marketing? If whatever you're doing isn't working, or you want to have a strategy call, let me know. Here's a link to my, my meeting request. Like that's what it's about. This is the power of LinkedIn. Keep it within the box of LinkedIn. Take it outside when it's appropriate. But you got to use this every single day. So let's go a quick recap before we go into the comment section. Hopefully there's some comments here. We got comments, guys? Yeah. So they're shaking their head. Yes, we got comments. Hopefully you got some comments to go through and some good questions. Because this is when it gets crazy. This is when we go down paths and rabbit holes where we get into some weeds of some technical stuff and I just lay out the tactic. So you want to, number one, understand why. Agree with it. Even if you're like, I don't know, Kyle, dude, yes, do it. LinkedIn is important to you. You, can, you could find a job. And we don't even go into personal branding and what that could do. Just straight up, you want to sell a market to people, out, this is what, what you need to do. That's the why. Second, update your profile. We'll do a separate, if I need to, do a separate video on how to update your profile. Build out your network. Talked at length about that. If you guys want the third party tool to work on that, put that in the comment section below. We'll get you hooked up with it and teach you guys how to use it. It's amazing. And maybe you guys are already using it, but I'll, we'll teach you how to use it more efficiently. Number four, engagement. Got to engage with these people. You have to, have to, have to. Every single day, 30 to 60 minutes a day. Do it on the weekend. You'd be shocked at how many people are on LinkedIn on the weekend. I'm getting connection acceptance requests. I'm getting connection requests on LinkedIn. I'm getting comments to posts I did on Tuesday, on a Saturday or a Sunday. People are on LinkedIn on the weekend. Different mindset, but they're on there. That's the engagement. And the fifth one, go to the board, sell. How are you going to sell? You're going to sell the way I told you to, which is, you, is my head covering it up? No. Go to the board, sell. That's where you want to do a soft sale. You ever need anything, let me know. Hey, here's some tools. Here's some tricks. Here's some case studies. Here's some white papers. Here's some videos. Here's some guides for you. I'm just trying to help you out. What's one thing that kept you up at night with your supply chain? Let me see if I have a resource that can help you out. And I'd be like, you ever need anything, man? I'm here. It works. So guys, thank you so much for sticking around. Thank you so much for giving me your attention for the last 56 minutes. Hopefully you got some value. I've got the team through the window giving me the thumbs up. Love to see that. 
and I will see you on the next one.